Hey, hi everyone, welcome to this new video and in this video we are going to take a look how we can send notification as soon as a pod is deleted within our Kubernetes cluster. So let's get started. We know that Kubernetes is an event driven system and it exposes those events with the help of some interfaces and that we are going to look in today's video. So in today's video, we are going to create a custom controller uh, that is going to observe on the pods. And as soon as a pod is deleted, we are going to capture that event and send that message to our message queue. So for today's demonstration, I'm going to use ActiveMQ for sending those messages. So feel free to use any messaging platform. If you want to send those events or messages to the Slack, you can use it or you can use any other platform as well for those messages. So this is our Kubernetes development repository and in there I'm going to create one folder inside this K8 client go and I'm going to call it as notify controller. And here let's create a go mod file. And now uh, let's create one main.go file which is the entry point of our application. Okay, so now in today's session, we are going to take a look on special uh, interface or special functionality that is available within the client goal library and that is called informer. So what actually are informers? So before understanding informer, let's understand what is the role of Kubernetes controller. So the role of Kubernetes controller is to watch on the objects for the desired state and the actual state and basically try to send some instructions to match those desired states with the actual state. And to get that information, controller has to poll the API server to get the information. But continuous polling of that uh, to the API server is not a good idea and that's why informer come into picture. So in today's video, we are going to create an informer for our pods. So let's write the basic code uh, to interact with the cluster. So that code I'm going to take from my previous video, which uh, in which we basically uh, did the initial setup. So let me just grab this part of code and let me put it here. And uh, this looks fine. Now, uh, what we have to do here, it, once we have the client set, so basically client set is a, is a collection of, uh, is basically set of clients that we have. And we are going to use this client set to create an informer or to create a shared informer. So let's create a factory here, informer factory. Informers dot shared informer factory. And here we have to pass the client set. And then here we have to pass the resync parameter. So basically this parameter is where uh, this uh, informer resyncs its state. So let's pass, uh, for now let's pass zero here. And uh, what do we have here? It should be new shared informer. Yeah. So now we have the informer factory and we can use this factory to get the informer. So we can do factory dot core v1. So here we are going to check for the pods, but you can do same thing for config map or for other um, uh, other Kubernetes objects like namespace and nodes as well. So we are going to do this for pod and we are trying to get the informer here. Let's store this in one variable. Let's call it as informer. So now we have the informer. Now we can basically watch on those events. So let's do informer dot add event handler. And here we have to just give a function which is cache dot resource even handler functions and here we can basically uh, give get all the functions so here we have three type of events so first one is the add event then we have the update event and then we have the delete event as well for today we are going to uh, work with the delete event where, uh, where as soon as a pod is deleted we basically get that event uh, here and here we can wrote, uh, write our function which is going to send those events to our message queue so let's write a function here and this function will get a object uh, and here basically we can specify the code for 
sending those events to the message queue. So uh, let's let me just format this code and let's try to run this. Let me put a print statement here. Delete event. And let me just create a Kubernetes cluster here. I'm going to use kind. So our cluster is ready. Let's try to um, query it. Yes, so our cluster is ready now. Uh, looks like it is not in ready state, but let's, yeah, so now it is ready. And now uh, let's try to run this application, uh, our custom controller. So let's go to the folder. And here, let's run main.go. Okay, uh, we have to add the packages to the main dot go, uh, go mod file. So let me just uh, add the required statement here. Let me just get it from my previous code. And let's do go get here or go mod tidy. So our controller has started now uh, what we can do let me just create one more instance of terminal here and here basically let's try to create a deployment let's try to create a deployment with name busy box and image as busy box so deployment got created and uh, our controller got exited now so uh, basically uh, we missed one thing that when we started our controller basically we have to uh, make it run in the background so and also we and also we will be going to use channels to make that uh, controller up and running uh, so it should not get terminated as soon as it receives an event so let's try to run this again and now let's try to uh, add that code here so for that we have to basically start the this controller in the background so let's uh, run, write a go routine in former dot run and here we have to pass the channel so let's create a channel first let me create a channel here let's call it as stopper so we create a channel and let's pass it here stopper and uh, we have to do one more thing uh, we have to basically uh, close this channel as well so I can write a defer statement here defer stopper dot close or defer close and here I can pass stopper so this is fine let's try to run this let me write some uh, statements here as well So this will be for update and this will be for so update uh, will get two uh, parameters so first one is the old value and second one is the new value so I can get, get has, uh, give two parameters here object 1 and object 2 and this is the update update event and this is uh, add event okay let's try to okay so our controller did not stop uh, basically what we have to do here we have to just uh, wait for the uh, any event that it receives let's try to run this and now let's try to delete this deployment busy box and let's see if we get the event yeah so here you can see we got some events and we got add event uh, and then at the end we also got the delete event so basically we are going to capture this delete event today and we are going to send this message to the queue let me instead of do printf let me do print ln here so that it is in a new line So now uh, this should be fine 
and now let's create one package where I'm going to put my active MQ code. So let me create a package here. I will call it as active MQ. And here let's create one file called active MQ.co. So first let's create a struct uh, where uh, we are going to pass the active MQ uh, address and then we are going to create an instance of active MQ and we are going to pass the address and we are going to create an instance of active MQ. After that we are going to have a function which is going to connect to that active MQ. So here you can see that we are uh, basically calling this active MQ function. We can call this active MQ function and it is going to return the connection and as well as error. And lastly we are going to create a one more function which is basically going to send the message to our queue. So let me just close this and this is the function which is with name send and basically here uh, let me I can just skip this parameter and this function basically uh, needs a message in the byte array format and it is going to return error in case if it finds an error and uh, what we are going to do here we are just calling this connect function to connect to the queue and then we are basically creating a queue here if that does not exist and then we are publishing that message to that particular queue. So here you can see uh, we are passing the routing key uh, as the same name as the queue name and then here we are passing our function uh, message you can see we are passing our message here. So now let's call this uh, uh, send function from our main not go. So here uh, we can basically create an instance of active MQ. So I can do active MQ dot uh, new active MQ and then I can pass the active MQ host here. So for host let's create a uh, variable here const and uh, we can basically pass the host here uh, define the host here. So host this is going to be our active MQ host and then uh, I think we have to uh, import this package as well. Okay, so now we have the MQ host here as well. Let me just rename it to uh, to MQ host. Okay, so now uh, so far we are good, and basically we can just call that uh, delete function here, uh, send function here. So I can do MQ dot send, and I can pass my message here. But the problem is that this event. Uh, that we get it is a it is type of interface so we have to basically convert this to byte format so I can do simply json dot marshall I can pass object here and this is going to give me error as well as uh, that message in the byte format so we got the this message let me call it as message and then I can pass message here so this looks good to me uh, now what we can do we have to basically provide the message queue host so for the message queue I am going to use one uh, cloud service which is kind of they have a free trial as well so let's uh, let me open my browser here so here I am using this cloud AMQP uh, platform for my rabbit MQ instance and this provides a free tier as well so you can use it so basically I have created one instance uh, if I show you so I have created an instance here with the name informer and then uh, within that instance we have to basically uh, get that host uh, details and put it in our controller. So if you scroll down you can find your host URL just copy this and let me put it in my uh, controller code. So here we can just specify this the value here and now uh, let's try to run this. Let me stop this. Clear up and now let's try to run it. Go run main.go and here I can first create a deployment because we deleted the deployment previously. So we should see one message coming for uh, this deployment got created the log statement that we uh, have in the code okay we forgot to add this 
package so let's do it let's run this command so now we can run this okay so you can see we have add events now if we just delete it uh, let's try to delete it and we should see some uh, activity going on our uh, active MQ instance as well so if let me show you that active MQ instance again so here if you just go to this rabbit uh, uh, rabbit mq manager uh, basically we should see the dashboard of rabbit mq and uh, here uh, we should see some activities going on so right now you can see there is no activity going on but let's try to uh, 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 delete the controller uh, delete the uh, deployment or pod and we should see some activity going on here so let's delete it and we should see the delete event firing here as well so we receive the delete event and now let's try to go to that rabbit mq dashboard to see the message so here we can see we basically got one message and there is some activity that is going on uh, let's uh, go to this queue section and here we should be able to see our queue name which is publisher uh, in our case uh, that is defined in our active mq.go file and we have the queue here which is publisher and if we just go to this get message section this one here you can just simply uh, click on this get message and you can see the get uh, you will see the message details here so we can see that the name of the deployment that we deleted the generated in the namespace and uh, we can also see uh, the creation time spent so all the data related to that pod we can basically see it here so let's try to do one more thing let's create a deployment uh, with different name this time and let's see if the name is getting reflected here or not so let me just delete this or uh, let's create a new deployment first so this time instead of busy box let's give a different name uh, maybe my pod and we will try to delete this deployment so it got created we should see some add events here and then we can just delete this delete deployment with name my pod so it got deleted let's go to the browser so if we just uh, go to this overview page so we can see we have one more message and uh, if we just go to queues this publisher we should uh, if we just try to retrieve a message this time it should have the name with okay so this is showing i think showing the older message to us so here we can see uh, that the third message was for this pod which is my pod and you can see uh, the name this is the name uh, my pod and then the generated name is also starting with my pod and and after this you can have one client application which is consuming those messages from this queue and you can process them as per your requirement or you can have some analytical you can you can basically create some analytical dashboards on the top of this information that you have so uh, in this way like we saw that how we can use informers to watch on the resources and uh, uh, watch on those events and as soon as we find the event we can basically trigger our notifications so using this similar approach you can send notification to any platform or of your choice you can uh, do integration with slack or you can do integration with uh, emails or pagers so pretty much you can do integration with uh, every possible mechanism that has uh, apis and uh, uh, and in this demonstration we saw this for the pods but you can do this pretty much for every Q, uh, kubernetes resource so you can do this for deployments stateful sets even for services as well or even for your networking or ingress tools as well yeah so this is what i wanted to discuss with you guys and if you like this video then please give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and i will see you in the next one